So I put together my favorite closes for you to apply to any industry, but specifically, I'm gonna make this suitable for the insurance industry and our company, so this will be able to help, hopefully, many, many people. And I stole these from some of my best friends and coworkers in the business, and some are mine. The first one is the assumption close. So I think this is the best close anytime, any place, anywhere, but uh, essentially it would be going over the presentation and providing them options and then going into, out of all of these options, which of these makes the most sense? So you're saying which of these would make the most sense opposed to, do any of these make any sense? Would you be interested in doing something today? It's out of these options, which one makes the most sense today? So let me see if I'm missing anything here. I like to utilize the wife as the decision maker. So I'm gonna plug into my notes, that way you guys get 100% of the information. So I like to utilize the wife as the decision maker. I, I usually just assume happy wife, happy life. So 99.99% .99 of the time, that's gonna be the case. You're obviously gonna have the slim percent where it's, the husband's just gonna overrule everything. But usually happy wife, happy life. So I like to direct that question to the wife. Out of all these decisions today, Mary, which of these makes the most sense? for you to go with today for your family's financial future. And then you shut up and close. The second is you're going to anyways close. So this one sounds like it's from Cardone, uh, The Closer Survival Guide. I recommend you guys reading that book and just going over it over and over and over again. Practice the closes, teach it to your people. It's phenomenal. So you're going to have to eventually do this down the road. So we are just going to do it anyways. You're gonna have to do this down the road, so let's go ahead and just get it done today. You're gonna, let's just do it anyways and then you shut up and close. The third is rapport and do it anyways close. So I feel like it's a good price. Obviously you said it was affordable. You said you liked the product and I think we have established a good enough relationship today where I feel like we would do business together. Let's just get this taken care of now because we will eventually do it anyways. And then I like to end all of my insurance closes with who do you want this money going to? because we don't sell a tangible product in the insurance industry, nine times out of 10, unless you have a supplemental product where they can have a cancer plan or some type of medical hospitalization plan. So I like to give them the money. So Mary, who do you want the million dollars in protection going to? You, of course, right? Awesome. And then what day do you want that to come out? First, middle, or end of the month? Assume, 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 and assume again. Fourth close, failed you close. Sir, I feel like I failed you. I hear John Rent, you know, this is one of my best, one of my best sales reps uh, that transitioned into a phenomenal leader, but he would say this all the time. He'd say, I'd hear him around the office, sir, I feel like I failed you. It was a good price and you said that wasn't the issue. You already said you do need to do this and I feel like we've established a good enough relationship that you would want to do this with me. Let's just do it anyways. Who do you want this money going to? Number five, feel felt found close. This is my personal favorite. I understand how you feel and others have felt the same way. What we found was making a decision today will be the best decisions for your family's financial future. Where do you go wrong with doing that, Mary? Or is that fair, Mary? See, psychologically, when you put people in a position where you say, where do you go wrong with doing that? You utilize the power and leveraging against the negative where it's like, no one's gonna say you do go wrong with protecting your family by saying, where would you go wrong with doing that? Or is that fair? Who would say it's not fair to protect their family's financial future? Protecting their family. 99% of people usually care about their family regardless of what uh, front they put on. Six is a scale from one to 10 close. So on a scale from one to 10, what would you rate your benefits package or policy or whatever product it is you're selling? What would make it a 10? Okay, great, I'll handle that. And now who's this money going to? So once they tell you what would make it a 10, find a way to provide that solution and then assume the close. Now that that's handled, who do you want this money going to? Seven, value exceeds price close. I understand and I assure you that there's a great deal of difference between what my competitor delivers and what I deliver. Once you see that, you will see that I actually offer way more value than what they presented. And when value exceeds price, price is no longer relevant. So who do you want this money going to? That one seems a little wordy to me, but use it if you like it. Rash decision close. I hear you and I agree, but the reality is, is there's only a few reasons why you wouldn't make a decision today. May I share them with you? Number one, lack of confidence in the product. Two, price or terms are not right. Three, you don't have the confidence in me or the company. Which one is it? 
nine times out of ten, they're, they're probably going to say price. And then obviously you just need to build more value. And so something I learned, instead of making it cheaper, add something on. So add something on. What if we added this bonus? Would, would that make more sense? Here's what it would do for you. And if you don't do this, here's a substitute that I recommend, and then recommend a substitution for them and like some type of legitimate, honest substitution to fill that need. That way it doesn't seem like you just have products that aren't needed or it, it ultimately just devalues your presentation and your pitch. Number nine is the promise close. This is one of my favorites. I kind of twisted this around from closes I heard from other really good sales reps. But I would say on your deathbed, I want you to imagine what would be the last thing you would say to your wife, Joe. And then I wouldn't really let them answer. I'd be like, what do you think that would be? And I, I would, I would kind of cut them off and I'd say, I bet it would be, I promise everything's going to be okay. And I would pause here. The whole family would get all weird because now I have them imagining everyone in the room is dying. I sell life insurance, so this is what I have to do. My job today is to make sure you don't break that promise. Which of these options makes the most sense? Notice the voice influx as well. I lowered my voice, I slowed down, so now I'm more emotionally engaged with the individuals as well. So that's a huge thing as well for closing, is just your voice influx can determine whether or not you're gonna be able to close and guide a presentation just by the way you carry your voice. Something you wanna bring a lot of attention to, you bring your energy up and you get a little more ecstatic and then you wanna bring seriousness. Listen, very calm, quiet, poised energy. Ten. Double back close. John and Mary, we'll get this done today and I'll double back with you guys in six months in six months and make any adjustments you need to make. Where do you want this money going to today though? That's another phenomenal close. Made me a lot of money. Don't try to make all the money in one sit. Cut it up. Come back. Build relationships. You're going to generate referrals and make way more money. People that try to make all the money they can off of me right off of one rip, that's all the money they'll ever make off me. They'll never make another dime off me because I'm going to find somebody down the road nine times out of ten that cares about building a relationship. They sell me what they can today and then we come back in six months and I buy more. Number 11, the option close. Which option are you going with today? Very simple. Out of all these options, which one are you going with today? Kind of like the first one. I think that's from Andre Bent. This is the walkout close. I use this all the time because I was always scared when people told me I want to think about it. I would say I completely agree, Joe Mary. Let's do one thing. I'm going to go grab my manager. I'm going to call my manager because I sold physically in the field. And you guys do me a favor. Go ahead and think about it. And we'll see if you guys want to make any adjustments. And I'll see if I can't do anything better for you with my manager. I'd come back in and say, great news. My manager actually gave me a discount code or a bonus code where I'm going to be able to make some bonus additions to your policy. Sound good? Which of these are you going with today? Perfect. 13. This is the callback close. Joe, Mary, I know we spoke a few days ago, but I wanted to show you how close we are to making the wisest and most enjoyable investment decision of your life. Show options, paraphrase value in correspondence with their main concern, and ask, now which of these options are you going with today? Perfect. Now, Mary, who's this money going with today? So I want to revert back to show the options. So show the options. Keep it very short and simple. Marry the value to the problem. Marry the solution to the problem. So with life insurance, here's the income protection to protect Joe's income. God forbid he passes away. That way you have 10, 15, 20 years of income like you really said you needed and loved. Mary, that's what we're going to do for you today. And we're going to do it at this bonus discount for you. Isn't that awesome? Where do you go wrong with doing that? Do you want this to come out the beginning, middle, or end of the month? 